Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining class. We'll begin. Uh, I think in the meantime, the others can uh, join in. Okay, can I ask Paul to lead us in prayer, please, this morning? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yet another day in our life. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that guided us throughout the night. Father, this time, we commit this class again into your hand through the power of the Holy Spirit that you guide us, you give us understanding. Move with us, Lord God, till we finish all the course. We pray, let the network be stable. Pray for those who have not joined, let them also join. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good to see uh, four of you. The rest should be joining class. Okay, uh, so on Wednesday, we began uh, Chapter 6, uh, Sin, the Fall, and uh, Salvation by Grace, the Doctrine of Sin, the Fall, and uh, Salvation. Uh, we looked at the definition of uh, sin, and we also looked at uh, a few other aspects uh, related to sin. And then we began looking at uh, the consequences of sin. The first consequence is uh, an inward spiritual death. Um, the second one is separation from God. So those of them who sin, you know, we know that uh, they separated uh, from uh, God eternally. Okay, there's physical death of the body as well. Not only just spiritual death, but we saw that uh, in in the case of Adam and Eve, when they sinned against God, um, the first death that happened was a spiritual death. They died in their spirit, man. Um, they were not able to uh, relate with God. They were not able to uh, have fellowship with God. And then they eventually died one day. So there's physical death of the body. There's also eternal separation uh, from the presence of God uh, to the place called hell. Uh, we read this in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, uh, where it says, Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And the other consequence of sin, the fifth one, is that it keeps away the blessing of God uh, from sinners, uh, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 24 and 25, we read there it says, They do not say in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, who gives rain, both the former and the latter, in its season. He reserves for us the appointed weeks of the harvest. So it's God who sends rain, sunshine. Uh, it's God who uh, blesses the work of our hands, gives us the harvest that is uh, uh, that we need at the appointed time. But, you know, God has kept away the blessings from the people of Israel, from the nation of Israel. And, uh, you know, they say, uh, so the Prophet Jeremiah saying, let them fear the Lord, our God, um, you know, so that uh, he will bless them. Okay. Uh, sin, the other consequence of sin, the sixth one is that uh, people are enslaved uh to sin, they're also enslaved and under the bondage of Satan. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 34, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Okay, So we become slaves of sin. The law of sin reigns in our body. The dominion or the reign or the power of sin rules and reigns in our body and we are also enslaved and uh, under uh, the demonic oppression we are under uh, satan's influence and his uh, uh, and his domination in our life and the lives are also open to demonic uh, domination like uh, sickness and death uh, we know that the consequences of um, sin is uh, uh, death we also know that God did not is not the author of uh, sickness. He did not create sickness. He created everything perfect. But when heaven um, in sin, we know everything that God created perfect became imperfect, and that's when uh, sickness, pain, suffering, uh, and death entered the world. And so we know that sickness and death, you know, is the consequences of sin. Um, 
when Wang Tang Sing, they opened themselves, um, they were under the authority, they were under the rule and the dominion of Satan, they were his slaves, and yet, and, uh, and because of that, uh, you know, uh, our lives are open to demonic domination. So these are the seven consequences of sin. Now we look at what happens when a Christian sins. So what happens when a Christian is basically a believer uh, sins, okay? So uh, after we are born again, uh, do we commit sin? After we receive Jesus into our lives, after we are a new creation, we are born again, do we sin? Yes, no? Yes. Yes, we do sin. Um, so what happens when we sin? What happens when we sin? Come on, we repent. Some... Yes, we have to repent. Yes. What is the other consequences? Uh, uh, what happens when a believer sin? person who is born again, what happens? Of course, something that we have to do is repent. But like yeah. we saw the consequences of sin, what is, what happens uh, when a believer sins? Yes, go ahead, Sita Kailu. No, I'm dead. Okay, dead. Uh, the Holy Spirit will convict our heart so that we will repent. And, you know, yeah, that's the key. <laughs> yes, thank you, Zitori. Yes, the Holy Spirit uh, who is in us will uh, convict us, um, uh, will show us what we have done is wrong, will uh, tell us, and uh, will re lead us to repentance. Yes, thank you. Yes, Rebecca? I think, again, there is another separation. Okay, uh, what kind of separation? The separation from the Holy Spirit and us waiting upon us to confess and repent our sins. And then if we do, then the Holy Spirit comes back to us. Thank you. Uh, the Holy Spirit never leaves us because uh, Jesus uh, uh, said that, you know, when he goes back to Father John chapter 14, John chapter 16, uh, he says that when the Holy Spirit will come, he will never leave you. Okay, so the Holy Spirit will never leave us once we are born again. Uh, he's always there inside us. He's always there with us. The Holy Spirit never leaves us uh, nor forsakes us. But what happens is the Holy, the Holy Spirit uh, will, you know, they, yeah, there is, a, there is a kind of a breakage in, in, in the fellowship. The Holy Spirit remains quiet, silent. Because uh, we do not ask the Holy Spirit or we do not heed to his voice or when he's correcting us, we do not want to give in. We want to go to our own ways. And we know the Holy Spirit is very gentle. He's, uh, you know, he does not force himself upon us. He does not force us to do things. Uh, uh, you know, and we, uh, God has given us the will to choose. But the Holy Spirit will never leave us nor forsake us. Yes, but he is uh, very quiet. He's there with us. It's very quiet, his grief, his, uh, his pain by what uh, we are doing, that we are living in sin. But yet there is a, a, a separation, so to say, in the fellowship. Uh, but the Holy Spirit will never leave us to forsake us after we are born again. Okay? Yes, but there is a, a, a breakage in the, in the relationship. But when we ask forgiveness of sins uh, and when we ask the Holy Spirit to you know, continue to sanctify us and we uh, rededicate, we submit, um, consecrate our lives again, then the Holy Spirit will begin his work in us because we have given him room. So the Holy Spirit works in us to the extent we allow him to work with us, uh, to the extent that we fellowship with him every day. Uh, that is why, that is when we can hear the Holy Spirit more clearly because we are fellowshipping with the uh, Holy Spirit, okay? What else happens when a believer sins? Do we lose our standing with God, our right standing with God? 
No. No, we do no, not we lose. Okay, thank you, Zintuli and Yubega. We don't lose our standing with God. Uh, we are still seen as righteous. Are we condemned? No. No. How do we know that we are not condemned? Romans chapter. Anyone knows the chapter in the verse? Chapter 8, ma'am. Thank you. For there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, which says, Now for there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So we are not condemned. We don't lose our righteous standing. Um, do we lose our salvation? Can we sin? No. No, we don't lose our salvation as well. Because our salvation is not based on our merits, but it's a free gift of God. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Every, anyone knows that verse? We've been reading that. It's a very familiar verse. For the wages. For the wages of sin is death. Thank you. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, so we do not lose our salvation. And our salvation, because our salvation is not based on our merits, not what we do, uh, but it's a free gift of uh, God. Okay? And uh, yes, uh, you know, Christ died for our sins. He just didn't die for the sins that we have done in the past, but he paid for our sins once for all, all the sins that we've committed in the past, present, and future. Uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 3 says, uh, you know, for I delivered you first of all that first of all that which I also received that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. So Christ died for our sins, he died for our sins past, present, and future. So that must mean that after we are born again, uh, we've received Jesus Christ that was the Savior. Uh, you know, we have the right standing with God, uh, you know, we're excited and happy. Hey, we've got a place in heaven, like we've got a ticket to heaven. And um, can we continue singing? Because there's grace, there's mercy, we've got a ticket to heaven, nobody can take it away from us. Can we continue singing? No. I said no. No, oh, sorry, Rubega, I didn't hear that. I think no, Pastor, we shouldn't. Yes, we shouldn't. Yes. I think if we have truly accepted Jesus as our personal Savior, if we are born again, then, you know, we will not please our sinful nature like we were, uh, you know, uh, living in the past, uh, living to the desires of our sinful carnal nature, pleasing our sinful carnal nature. But if we truly say that we are born again, that we are made new in, in, uh, uh, in our relationship with God, we are restored, then we will please God. We will do things to please God and not hurt Him. It's the same as we look at in human relationships. When we say we love somebody, you know, we do everything to make them happy, uh, you know, do things to please them. Uh, when we hurt them, we ourselves are grieved, we ourselves are saddened, and we, uh, you know, uh, we might be angry for some time, but then we get back, we restore our relationship with them, we do things that will just make them happy. Why? Because we love them. And it's the same way with God. Uh, we do not take uh, his salvation for granted. We do not take his uh, grace for uh, granted. Okay. So uh, considering that he's a good, merciful, and loving God, but we can't take his salvation for granted. Um, uh, you know, and we continue to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, and we consecrate our lives every day uh, for the sanctification of the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what happens when uh, we do sin as uh, believers? Our fellowship with God is disrupted, um, and our Christian life is damaged. So when you know when we sin, yes, God continues to love us. He's gracious and merciful and loving, but He's saddened. He's grieved. God is displeased with our sin because He cannot stand sin, and yes, we bring Him a lot of sorrow. Uh, and hence, our personal relationship with God is disrupted. 
uh, that's when when we pray and cry out to God, we feel sometimes He's not hearing us. There's no answer, but maybe we open our door to some sin in our lives. We're entertaining some sin, and that is why we can't hear God speak. It's not that He does not want to speak, or He does not want to work, or He doesn't want to uh, bless us, or heal us, or restore us. It's because sin has caused a barrier, or this, uh, you know, it's kind of disrupted our fellowship, our relationship uh, with God. Um, you know, we cannot be fruitful in our life, uh, in the whether it's in the in the workplace or in the ministry, whatever we are doing in our Christian life, uh, there will be no fruitfulness in our ministry. It will be damaged. Uh, and Jesus talks about this in John chapter fifteen. He says, uh, "If you abide in me, and I abide, and my words abide in you, you will bear much fruit." Okay, so if we abide in, uh, in, in Jesus, that means when we are uh, uh, intimate in our relationship, in our walk with God, uh, and his words abide in us, that means his word uh, is guiding us and leading us uh, and directing us, then it says that we will bear fruit. And Jesus says in John chapter 15 that, uh, you know, apart from him, we cannot do anything. We cannot bear any fruit. Okay, and... Um, uh, so our Christian life and our fruitful ministry or our fruitfulness in ministry and in our workplace, if you work in the secular world, uh, will uh, will not see the favor of God, will not see the blessing of God, and you know there will be damage in our Christian life as uh, well. Okay, sin uh, causes us to move away from our fellowship with Christ, um, you know, and. Um, and as a result of that, you know, uh, the decree uh, or the degree that uh, we are growing in our relationship with God or the degree to which we are abiding in Christ decreases, okay? And um, as we continue to sin and do not heed to the voice of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit remains silent, you know, um, kind of inactive in our lives because we are not giving him the room, the space to do it. Uh, he's not at the center of uh, our lives. God is not the center of our lives. Our sinful desires, the lust of our eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of our life is kind of controlling and dominating our lives. And that is when the Holy Spirit will take a back seat. Uh, he will step back, let us do what we want. And, uh, you know, and, and at those times, it's very dangerous moments because that will cause us to increasingly get in deeper and deeper into uh, sin to the extent that, um, you know, we can come to a point that we can even uh, deny God. And the Word of God says that uh, in First Timothy, uh, you know, it says if uh, God, if we are uh, unfaithful, God will remain faithful because he cannot be unfaithful. That is not his nature. But if we deny him, then he will uh, deny us. And even Jesus said that, you know, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. If you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. And I think it's in uh, Hebrews that says, you know, if, um, if once we have tasted uh, the goodness of God, uh, we've tasted uh, his the salvation, we've known uh, God in a personal way, it means we are born again, uh, but we um, continue to live in sin and we, uh, it's like come to an extent where we trample the blood covenant under our feet. That means we trample it in the sense we consider it as an unworthy thing, uh, un, you know, unholy thing and we do not, uh, uh, you know, have any value for what God has done for, uh, on the cross by paying for our sins. Then it says there's no more forgiveness of sins uh, left but only a dreadful uh, punishment. So we need to, that's why the word of God says we need to guard our lives, we need to work out our salvation daily. Okay, And I, I am so happy that the word daily is there because it says work out your salvation daily. Yes, salvation is a free gift, but we need to work at, uh, we need to always partner with God, you know. Uh, our relationship with God is basically a partnership in any area, even in the area of salvation. Yes, uh, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He purchased our salvation, but we need to partner. We need to come and accept that salvation by faith. We receive that by grace through faith. And so we receive it only when we come 
our, our, in our faith and we accept it. Okay, and uh, our, uh, our sanctification process is also a partnership. Our, um, our salvation life, our, uh, uh, our journey to the rest of our life is also a partnership. And we partner with God in obeying Him, in hearing His voice, in, in reading His word, in fellowshipping with Him. Uh, in, in submitting uh, uh, to the uh, to work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Even the promises of God uh, that is given in His Word, or this, His Word is so powerful, uh, it's dunamis, it's dynamite power, uh, but we need to partner with uh, that because when we partner with in just His Word that He has spoken, and we speak it, we decree it, we believe it by faith, we will receive it's a an, it's an yes and an amen that we will receive back. But for, for the promises of God to be a yes and amen, we need to partner with him again in saying, God, I believe your promises, I stand on your promises, I hold it, and I decree it, I speak it till I, I receive it, till I see it. And before I see it in the natural, God, I receive it by faith. So a life with God is a partnership, even though... Uh, you know, his promises are yes, and uh, his salvation is a free gift, but yes, we need to partner with God in every step of our Christian life, okay? Now we look at the doctrine of uh, salvation. It has five, uh, you look at five main components, God, man, Christ, uh, grace, and faith, okay? So, uh, first of all, God. Uh, God is the one who is the author of salvation. He planned everything. He planned salvation. It was a done, complete thing in his mind. Even before the foundation of the world, um, we know that God is merciful. He is loving. He does not want to punish us for our sins. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, God is love. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Okay, so in his love, in his grace, in his mercy, in his compassion, he uh, unfolded or he planned and he brought about the redemption plan that we had, uh, the salvation of the entire mankind. Uh, we also see that God is just, he's a just God, a righteous God. And because he's just and because he's righteous, he must punish sin. Um, and hence, uh, we see in the Old Testament, there is punishment for sin. Uh, but when uh, people stand and intervene, like Moses stood and intervened for the people, uh, when they offer the sacrifices, it makes atonement for their um, sins. Okay. The next one is man. Uh, we are all sinners. Man is a sinner. And how do we know that? How do we know that all of us have sinned? Which was in the Bible tells us that. Romans so chapter. Adam. Okay, to Adam. Thank you. Thank you, Subhashis. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. Okay, so all of us have sinned. Uh, can man save himself from his sins? Can man save himself from his sins? Yes, ma'am. No, Pastor. Mm -mm. No, we cannot save ourselves from our sin. Uh, 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 Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no man can boast. Okay, so it's not something that we can do for ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. If we could save ourselves, then there was there was no need for uh, God to become man. There was no need for the incarnation. Okay, uh, but because we cannot save ourselves, the penalty for sin is so great. Uh, nothing, uh, you know, can be done to appease the just and the righteous God um, uh, and uh, appease His judgment. Uh, and, uh, uh, only a, a sinless man could pay for the sins of the world. And so we know that it's not by ourselves that we can save ourselves or we can receive salvation. But Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, rightly says, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no man can boast. Yeah, no one can boast. So none of our works 
none of our good works, none of our good deeds. The Bible says all our good deeds is like filthy rags in, in God's eyes. Okay. The next component of uh, salvation is Christ himself uh, who made a full sufficient and perfect sacrifice. So who is Christ? We've, all, we've studied about him in Christology. He's infinite. He is God, the man, incarnation. We looked at John chapter 1 verse 1, John chapter 1 verse 14, so I'm not going to look at that. And what did Christ do for us? He paid for our sins and uh, he restored uh, he redeemed us from sin, from slavery of sin and uh, Satan. Uh, he restored our relationship back with God. He redeemed us back to God, uh, gave us a, a legal standing, a righteous standing, and also a place, uh, an eternal life and place uh, for us in heaven. And all this is a free gift, so there's nothing that we need to do. Salvation is not by works. Uh, it's no place that you have to go, there's no river that you have to, uh, you know, bathe in, there is no gifts that you have to give, no sacrifices that you have made, because Jesus has already made a full sufficient, uh, perfect uh, sacrifice. Okay, uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6 says that we all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to his own ways, and the Lord God has placed on him that is on him is on Christ Jesus the iniquity of us all. God placed on Christ Jesus uh, all of our sins and our iniquities. Okay, so that is the next component that uh, Christ in salvation. Um, then we look at grace and faith. So uh, salvation is a free gift. Uh, it's not earned. Uh, and we don't deserve it, but it's a free gift to uh, us. And uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay? The next component in salvation is faith. Um, and this faith is not something that is an in intellectual faith. It's not agreeing intellectually or mentally. Uh, yes, we have the faith that, uh, you know, the chair that we are sitting on or the bed that we are lying down uh, is, is going to hold us. It's not talking about that kind of faith. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's not even not talking about natural faith, but for salvation, for the works of God, it requires supernatural faith. Okay. Uh, so because of that faith is, you know, we don't see, we don't uh, understand, but yet we believe. So it is not uh, just agreeing on something intellectually or mentally, uh, and it's also not natural faith, but it's the faith that God himself gives us or releases us uh, to our supernatural faith that requires us uh, to accept uh, the work on the cross and to receive um, salvation, okay? And it's also trusting in Jesus alone for our salvation, um, uh, we already looked at um, we already looked at Ephesians chapter two verse eight where it says we are saved uh, by grace uh, through faith. Uh, Romans chapter ten verse nine. Can one of you please read Romans chapter ten verse nine, please? Or if anyone knows that. Uh, by heart, you can also say that. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Can one of you read that, please? Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth that Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Thank you. So, um, how are we saved? Uh, there are two things here. We need to believe in our hearts uh, that uh, Jesus died on the cross, that he is God, that God raised him back from the dead, and we need to confess it with our mouths. Confess that we are sinners, that we have sinned against God, and uh, we need to first of all believe, and secondly, confess with our mouths, and then it says you will be saved. I'm not saying that you have to do any good works, you have to go anywhere, all you need to do is just believe in your heart that uh, God, uh, Jesus is God, that uh, he died on the cross for our sins, God raised him back from the dead, 
and when we confess uh, with our mouths and ask for forgiveness, uh, we receive salvation. We are born again. We are made new creatures. Okay. Anyone has any questions and doubts so far? So is there salvation apart from Jesus Christ? Can we receive salvation through any other means apart from Jesus Christ? No. No? Okay. Uh, how do we know that from scripture? Acts 4.12, I think. Thank you. Acts 4.12 says that salvation... Uh, can one of you read that? It's a very important uh, verse. So can one of you read that loudly, please? And somebody else can turn to John chapter 14, verse 6. So we'll have one of you read Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And someone else can read John chapter 14, verse 6. Acts 4, 12. Verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Thank you. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thank you. So here we see salvation is found in no one else. There's no other name under heaven. Or there's no other name on earth uh, given to mankind, which they can be saved, but the name of Jesus. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So how do we receive salvation? How do we receive salvation? Through accepting Jesus Christ that he died for our sins and okay. then baptism. And then, sorry to be And then we are taken into full body immersion in the water, baptism. Okay, thank you. So how does one receive salvation? By confessing and believing by faith that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, thank you, Zinatoli. The first thing we saw was to believe in our hearts. Uh, believe what? That the Lord Jesus, that uh, Jesus is Lord, He is God. That uh, believe what He has done on the cross. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. And yes, we confess uh, with our uh, mouth, so we acknowledge Him as our Lord and Savior of our life. We welcome into our life and we also acknowledge that we have sinned, uh, we have gone away from him. And uh, once we do that, you know, uh, we are uh, born again. Okay, like it says in John chapter 3, verse 3. Uh, so the, uh, the Bible calls this experience as being born again. Okay, now we look at uh, what is salvation. So what exactly is salvation? What is salvation? I'm sure all of you in this class have received salvation. So what is salvation? What does it mean to you all? Yes, can I share? Sure, please, I said. Yeah, I think uh, sal salvation is like uh, setting us free from the original sin committed by Adam that we inherited. So Jesus paid the price for us. So salvation is setting us free from that original sin. Thank you, Isaac. Okay, salvation, uh, the Greek word for salvation, uh, when you see it in the New Testament, is the word sozo, S-O-Z-O, sozo. Uh, and sozo is the Greek word found in New Testament, uh, it's found there 110 times. Um, 
And it's a very comprehensive word, like we saw shalom is a comprehensive word. It's a very full word. It has different components. The same way sozo or salvation is a very comprehensive word. It includes uh, uh, spiritual salvation. Uh, that means it includes forgiveness of our sins, healing from sickness, uh, deliverance from the enemy, uh, from every work of the enemy, preservation and rescue from every harm and danger and total holiness. Okay, so it's a very complete, com a comprehensive word, and it's like a complete package that we receive, a gift package from God. So it's not just uh, forgiveness of sins, salvation is not just forgiveness of sins, but it's also healing from sickness, of uh, uh, healing and uh, deliverance from any sickness, demonic bondages, strongholds. Uh, uh, from every curse, from every shame, uh, from every guilt, uh, from every uh, uh, bondage of the mind. It is it's deliverance from every evil work of the enemy. It's also preservation and rescue from every harm and danger. And it's total wholeness. So when God has given us salvation, so so has given us a complete gift package that we can um, receive. So sozo means being healed, delivered, victorious, rescued, and uh, preserved. Okay, so it means all of these things at the same time. And uh, this word sozo is a verb. So its verb is an action word. It does something. Uh, so when we receive salvation into our lives, you know, there's an act, there's action that is taking place. The moment we have received uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the action continues. The work of God continues to happen in our lives. The work of God for our healing, uh, from our guilt, from our brokenness, uh, you know, from our from, from the curses, from every shame. We receive healing and deliverance from the every from every work of the enemy. We are victorious and we are also preserved from all harm and um, danger. Okay. So sozo basically means, or salvation basically means that we are saved out of uh, the devil's power or his reign or his slavery, his dominion, and we are brought into uh, the kingdom of light or we are restored into wholeness of God's order and well-being by the power of God's uh, spirit. Okay. So let's look at a few scripture passages um, uh, or scripture verses as well, uh, where this word so so is mentioned in the uh, New Testament. Like I said, it's mentioned 110 times in the New Testament. So we look at it uh, to understand, uh, uh, you know, more about this um, full package of gift that we have received from God. So 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 means uh, spiritual salvation, uh, which is forgiveness of uh, sins. Uh, we read that in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. So can one of you read Acts chapter 10, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, please? Romans chapter 10, verse 9, can one of you read that, please? That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans okay. chapter 10, verse 9. Thank you. So here it says, you will be saved. So the word there in the Greek, if you read it in the Greek uh, uh, lexicon or the Greek uh, Bible, you see the word so, so. Okay, so if you... Uh, confess um, with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. The word there, saved, is salvation, which is a Greek word for so, so. Okay, so it's basically meaning forgiveness of sins, and uh, the word so, so is also mentioned in Acts chapter 1, verse 21, Acts 4, 12, and Ephesians 2, 8, uh, which is spiritual salvation. So, so also means uh, physical healing. Um, in Matthew chapter 9, we read... Um, you know, uh, uh, when Jesus uh, uh, was approached by Jairus and uh, he got delayed because of this woman who had the issue of blood, uh, you know, uh, touches the hem of Jesus' garment and immediately she is uh, healed. 
um, uh, so we see that this woman actually received so so that means she received salvation and part of her salvation package that she received was uh, healing so if we read in Matthew chapter 9 verse 22 uh, Jesus turned and saw her and he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has healed you. That means your faith has so so you. So faith has so so you means your faith has healed you. And the woman was so so from that moment. So it says there in the English Bible, and the woman was healed from that moment. But if you look at it in the Greek word, uh, the Greek Bible, it's uh, the Greek lexicon, it says it's so so. That means she has received salvation and part of that package of receiving salvation, she has received healing. Okay. Mark chapter 6, um, verse 56, uh, the people in the region of Gennesaret were touched by the divine uh, sozo or divine salvation. Uh, it says there in Mark chapter 6, verse 56, and wherever he went, wherever Jesus went into villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the hedge of his cloak. And all who touched him were so so. That means all who touched him were healed, uh, but they, uh, and they received salvation, and part of that was healing. Mark chapter 10 was uh, 52, which is a uh, narrative about uh, the blind man Bartimaeus. Um, Blind man Bartimaeus could not see Jesus. There was no one willing to take him to Jesus, and he knew this was the only chance. So he cried out, uh, "You know, uh, uh, Jesus, son of uh, David, uh, have mercy upon me!" And Jesus said, "Who is that? And bring him to me." And um, Jesus said uh, to the blind man Bartimaeus, "He said, Your faith has healed you." Uh, and immediately he receives his sight back and he follows Jesus along the road. So uh, the word he there, it's so, so your faith has so, so you. So you see that blind Bartimaeus received his healing because of faith. Or he received his salvation and hence received healing because of the faith that he activated. Okay. Uh, James chapter 5 verses 13 and 16, it says the prayer of faith will so, so the sick. Uh, which means the prayer of faith will save the sick. So, so also means uh, deliverance from uh, demonic powers. Uh, in Luke chapter 8, uh, we see the demon-possessed man in, uh, the, in Gennesaret who lived among the tombs. Um, uh, when he was delivered from the legion of demons that were in him, and Jesus set him free, uh, those who had seen this happen, uh, they say in uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 36, those who had seen it told the people how the demon possessed had been cured. That means how the demon possessed had been so so. Okay, so it's healing, cured, uh, uh, deliverance from every guilt and shame as well. Okay. Uh, Jude chapter 1 verse 5, uh, Jude also knew about salvation so so and he writes, though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered, that means the Lord so so his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. So the word delivered there is the word so so. Okay? We also saw that sozo means uh, rescue and preservation from harm and uh, danger. In Matthew chapter 8, we read the narrative of uh, the disciples along with Jesus um, uh, in the boat and uh, there was a violent storm and they were, going, they were sinking uh, and they cried out to Jesus to save them from the storm. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 8 verse 25 says, Then his disciples came to him and woke him up saying, Lord, so so us. Lord, save us. We are perishing. Okay. So the word save there is so so. Uh, Paul also wrote uh, to uh, Timothy, who was his son in the faith, um, about God's power to deliver in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18, where he says, The Lord will so so me from every evil attack and he will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. So the word here, he says, the Lord will so so me. Okay. 
uh, when Paul was uh, writing Second Timothy, he was in uh, uh, Roman imprisonment, and uh, you know he knows that uh, death was impending upon him, that uh, he's going to face death soon. He will be killed, and but he says the Lord will rescue. Okay, uh, means so so preserve from all harm, and rescue and preserve from all harm and uh, danger. Now, uh, is salvation for everyone? Is salvation for everyone? Yes. Okay, so Matthew chapter 18, verse 11 says, But the Son of Man has come to sow, sow that which was lost. So if you read it in your English Bible, the Son of Man has come to save, sow, sow that which was lost. Okay. We also saw that salvation, which is so so, is something that we receive by grace through faith. Um, okay, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. So the word there is for by grace you have been so so uh, through uh, faith. Okay, the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew chapter 9, we also see uh, that Jesus turned and saw her. And he said, take heart, uh, your faith has sold so you, your faith has healed you. And the woman was sold so from that moment. That means the woman was healed from that uh, moment. So we receive um, this sold so, we receive this salvation uh, uh, by grace through faith. And we also saw that we receive sold so for salvation when we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, uh, Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. Okay, so that is about salvation. I hope you're excited that salvation is not just forgiveness of our sins, but on the cross, Jesus is uh, you know paid for our purchased our healing, our uh, uh, you know deliverance from every curse, from every shame, from every demonic bondage and stronghold, uh, and uh, we have the preservation or rescue from all harm and danger. And fullness. So when you are praying for people, you can just declare that you can say, Jesus on the cross, you purchased our soul soon. And based on that, we just believe and we receive healing for this person, or we res receive um, uh, freedom from every demonic bondage and stronghold that we broken in the name of Jesus. The blood of the lamb that was shed for his soul so you can pray for yourself as well. Uh, you need wholeness in your life. You know, you have received wholeness. God has already given to it to us. You don't have to do anything. All you need to do is just acknowledge it, receive it, and, uh, you know, appropriate it for your life. Receive it by faith. Believe that it's a done thing. Before you see it in the natural, you know, say it's already done and thank God in advance for what you have received. Okay, any questions on this lesson? No questions? Okay, if there are no questions, uh, we'll end class here. Thank you all for um, uh, joining class. Um, have a blessed day and a blessed and refreshing, a restful weekend, and I will see you on Monday. Okay, thank you.